Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome by Social Sessions. Today the third episode which uh, has the theme inspiration and it's the uh, I made this theme because there were a lot of questions out of uh, you guys uh, about inspiration where to get it from how to get it how to uh, process it um, so I thought it would be nice to make a individual episode about this uh, subject and um, well Let's start by taking the questions from you guys. Um, and I'm gonna just work through them. Um, and let me uh, first say something general about inspiration. Because, um, well, inspiration comes from all around you. It can be the most easy thing. Look around me, there's a book. The cover of a book can be can be an inspiration because the one who made the cover of the book is also an artist and have chosen an inspiration to draw or design the cover like and you can also take something from it like and that's um, all kind of like the painting here of the painting sorry the drawing is from Leonard I received it um, as a gift for my book journey and he made he know I'm a big Marvel fan and thank you Leonard um, he used the cover of my book to create this beautiful drawing and um, he also had inspiration by the cover of my book but there's also like there's a plant uh, the fab of the, the the garment of the, uh, the, 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 the the rock under me uh, um, a design on a t-shirt it can be anything look around you and it can be a flower outside um, it can be the most easy thing so inspiration comes from daily life from everything around you from someone who has shown you something from something you see like um, don't think too hard about inspiration it doesn't have to be a full concept it can be something very easy and um, just take that in mind when thinking about inspiration that's what i wanted to say in general so now we go to the questions and um, the first question is from moji she asked me what made you start designing um, and although this is not really um, a des an, an inspiration question i felt like this was the question to also put in this topic because um, what made me start designing was uh, in the end being bored of uh, crocheting patterns already out there and because it's not giving any inspiration to uh, do something that's true to you and when i looked around me there was so much i wanted to translate into crocheting like my first pattern was uh, lotus and blossom mandala mandala and uh, well the inspiration for that whole pattern came from the lily pond where a lotus flower was blossoming at the moment i was sitting in the garden and i found like the little the little sprouts in in in, in the center and the little leaves it, it the beautiful pointy leaves it has i wanted to recreate that into yarn and it formed the perfect inspiration for our first pattern so this question is definitely belonging to this topic because that made me start designing the inspiration around me um, formed uh, the base to uh, see if I could create um, all that inspiration around me into yarn and I it was a bumpy road like not everything i had in my mind could be recreated into a pattern some things are too hard but others worked very well and that's how it always goes um, it's always seeing what you can do with a theme you think of, of an inspiration um, but that's what's definitely going to start so thank you for asking mochi um, let me see 
Then we have Karen and she asked me where do you get your inspiration from? Well, as said, life around me. And that's not, um, that can be very simple. Just walk into your garden and, and, and look around you. Nature is a perfect way of inspiration because there is so much to take from. And especially when it comes to crochet, we have lots of stitches and techniques to show leaves, flowers, uh, branches roots you can you can do anything like this pillow over here rambling roots i just took as an inspiration the um, um, a dead uh, root system from a tree which was actually in my garden a plant was had died and i was uh, digging it out out of the ground and and i saw a whole uh, connection a whole, a whole system of roots to, rambling to each other and that's where actually the, the, the inspiration for that cushion came from so it can be very easy and it can also turn up in a moment when you don't expect it uh, so inspiration comes from all kind of things and mostly for me which I like to do most is taking inspiration out of culture and out of um, well countries because the world is uh, full of inspiration and um, although here in the Netherlands there is much to see uh, seeing different parts of the world and seeing different cultures there is so much more to use and learn from which um, forms a rich base of inspiration to recreate in pattern stuff like whatsoever and so yeah well for sure my first book journey has that theme and um, I wanted it to be my first theme for a book because it's the most used thing in my uh, work but my my inspiration comes from all kind of things and, and it, it is really it can be architecture it can be uh, an animal it, it, it could anything anything at all so mostly i look around luckily we have uh, mobile phones these days so when i'm somewhere and i can see something where i get inspira inspiration from i just write it down in my phone like a note from okay uh I did see a gemstone, uh, gemstone, and I'll explain myself a little. Okay, this is the idea I have, and well, I put it down there, and later on, maybe one year later, maybe a half year later, I'll get to that point like, okay, what I'm gonna do? Oh, right, I had the gemstone idea. I'm now gonna work it out, and that's how my inspiration process mostly goes. So, I hope it answers your question, uh, Karen. Thank you for asking. Uh, then we have Linda and Linda asked me how do you turn inspiration into a design well that's uh, something I'm also will discuss in the uh, pattern episode but uh, to um, say a little about it um, it isn't always easy to recreate something from an inspiration to a pattern because well in the end crocheting is uh, has also limits you can't show up everything into yarn <laughs> it means like yeah well like if you draw or paint you can almost recreate a lifelike thing and with yarn you can't your your, your boundaries are there so you have to be creative in uh, more like uh, geometric forms and um, playing with lines and that kind of stuff and so I think you also have to uh, uh, have a good insight in math and um, a bit of feeling for architectural well how do you say it like uh, forms shapes whatsoever and how to uh, use the right stitches to come to that thing um, but it isn't always easy because people think like okay if you design fine it's 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 there but sometimes i also uh, frog about 20 times and it still isn't there i can have a thing like an inspiration but it doesn't turn out the way i want it to be and sometimes it really doesn't get there like it's not always 
here it is sometimes it also does but um, you also have to be realistic about your inspirations like is it uh, accessible in crocheting or knitting whatsoever and most of the time when having an inspiration I also already have an idea like okay well maybe I can put it in this, this with this technique and I put this perfectly into this this blanket or whatsoever so for me it is a more like natural thing uh, when I have an inspiration I also already know how I want to put it out there um, but how do I turn inspiration into a pattern yet yeah, it's really hard to tell because it's also part of a whole process like what works what don't work uh, well that's more designing like finding a way to get it out there it's not something you just can do or explain it's more like uh, playing uh, developing uh, trying as long as needed to get to a perfect outcome and that's what people sometimes also forget like if you crochet a pattern it seems like okay the words are out there of, or the chart or whatever or the video um, but most of the time weeks months years have gone by to just create that little pattern that you are making there because the way a designer comes to that point is sometimes really hard and it seems so easy when doing it like okay sometimes uh, I design an, uh, a cushion which I work for over three months and someone is crocheting it in three hours and well that's obviously something that is okay but um, the road to coming there to, to designing a pattern and publishing it is long um, so this is my answer to your question thank you for asking Linda uh, well another Linda <laughs> uh, how much time does it cost to turn inspiration into a design well just as I said sometimes a pattern can take up to three months or, or maybe if, if it is a large one like I have also uh, designed patterns like the seaside serendipity blanket which is a, a huge blanket with a sea theme built out of out of 10 parts and in every part there is another detail about fishes seaweed shells uh, well beach all kind of things um, and that kind of uh, designs are really the heavy ones like I can almost work a year about a blanket like that because there is so much detail in it and you also have to make sure um, that your inspiration and your ideas are also reflecting the right way on paper or video like you you uh, can have an inspiration and crochet what you like but you also have to make it readable and understandable for the people who want to also gonna make it later on so it takes a lot of time it, it it's also you have to do this because it is fun because you can't always uh, put a price on the amount of time you've put into a design and that's fine you you, you accept that but it also is uh, sometimes for especially companies who publish patterns uh, in magazines or whatsoever they offer most of the time a, a really low fee into a design because well for sure they can't offer you a big big price for anything because they also want to make any profit out of them publishment which is totally fine but for the designer it that fee is most of the time just a uh, well how do you say it it's a fun amount of money to do once uh, visit a movie or or go out of a dinner but it's not uh, worth the effort of creating a pattern actually and so you also have to state uh, for yourself like okay I don't have to make any profits it's just doing it for fun and the amount of time needed and put into it is something I'm willing to do so a lot of time uh, I hope this also um, answers your other question Linda thank you for asking um, what do we have anymore let me see mm. 
Well, we have Mika here. And Mika asked me, I would like to know how you get your inspiration and how an inspiring image or moment translates to a pattern for you. Well, I actually explained a little about that before this. Um, but when it comes to images uh, or paintings or whatsoever, <coughs> you always have to look. When, it's, when, when something like an image is an, is an inspiration for you, you also have to look for small details you can use and most of the time that can be the most small things like a lace border uh, a geometric pattern it can be anything and um, look for the little clues to reinvent yourself into a design don't think you can uh, recopy something you see into crocheting and more important i think is not willing to recreate something that is already out there like you can have a painting as an inspiration but don't try to literally copy that painting into a crochet design because the painter of that painting already created his own art you can't just copy it you have to use it as an inspiration so take something out of it and create your own um, creative creative pattern with it like do you understand like it's mean like it's not you have not to take literally everything out of an inspiration or an image or whatsoever just use a small part and turn it in something whole new well i think that's a good answer right um then we have um, yvonne kluitman she asked me do you ever thought or was inspired by a Tunisian crochet project. Well, uh, for sure, I have uh, used the technique of Tunisian crochet, but, well, how do you say it nicely? I hate it. Uh, <laughs> probably because of um, your work is getting beautiful and stitches are fine, and it's a nice technique to do once in a lifetime but i'm not a big fan of it 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 takes so much time to to crochet a row around and it's just so extra loops to take on and i'd rather go knitting instead of tunisian crochet because i and i feel also the options are really limited in tunisian crochet so i will not use it um probably that soon but never say never you don't know thank you yvonne um then I have uh, Margie with a really good question. Uh, which other crocheters uh, were an inspiration for you? Name just a few. Well, that's an easy question <laughs> because there are some, not all. Um, to say when I started this whole crochet design uh, thing, I uh, had a few crochet designers which really inspired me already and I most of the time crocheted their patterns so they were uh, a real school example for me when doing this and uh, the first one who really um, came to mind is uh, Tatjana from Lila Bjorn crochet um, her work is really I think we can easily say she is the best crochet artist in the world there is not much uh, left besides her which her work is so unique and especially well she has a feeling of, of designing nobody can um, be like her in my opinion it doesn't mean anyone else uh, sucks or it, it's not okay but well I feel she is like the the, the the best you can can get in this business and luckily i have uh, been able to have some contact with her over the years and she's a really lovely person and i learned a lot from her um, but she really formed inspiration for me as to start designing also um, besides that there are two well actually three other names because when starting this whole design thing uh, some people also helped me getting here like um, putting myself out there um, 
seeing my talent and f there are three persons is really in uh, three names which really uh, fit that um, thing and the first is Tina sorry I and I mean Tina out of Iceland I can't really pronounce her, her surname it's it's really hard but everyone knows Tina and she's especially uh, uh, famous for her mosey crochet and uh, she really introduced me to this technique and helped me putting myself out there and well I, I we have shared a lot um, over the years privately and I really love her and I'm very thankful and grateful to her and the same goes for uh, Martin from Martin up north he really was the role model when it comes to male crocheters because there aren't that many and um, his way of presenting himself like okay fine I'm crocheting I'm a guy fine it doesn't matter I really uh, f um, I wasn't there at that moment I felt like okay I can show myself like um, I really uh, my work fine but you don't have to see it's a guy who's crocheting and and I was afraid for reactions and of comments or whatsoever but he, he really seemed like confident and uh, putting himself out there and that really was um, uh, a very good example for me because what he did is something I'm finally being able to do and so it's a very important role model and as third there is Mio Crochet uh, Johanna uh, she in the beginning especially she supported me a lot by testing and translating some of my work uh, crochet along with me helping each other um, yeah she really paved the way for me in, 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 in the design world as well and yeah for sure I can name many other names because they're oh well let me say Jane Crowfoot I, I in my early years before designing I also uh, uh, crocheted her uh, crochet clubs which showed a great talent of, of designing and so she also um, really um, formed me in, in uh, crochet experience and, and getting on to more advanced patterns so she really uh, is also uh, one of my favorites and later on uh, when I designed my Freddie Mercury portrait uh, I came to the conclusion she really loved it and, and that was really a big compliment uh, but as said there are many many people out there who are doing a really great thing so in general I like a lot but these names are really important for me to mention here so I think that answers your question a lot and I have named a few so yeah then we have two questions left both from Julie um, and they're actually a bit of the same the questions let me explain of a re uh, <laughs> let me read you the first one um, has negativity in the world influenced your design patterns is your inspiration differently um, yeah I think it has and you know in what way like it doesn't mean like okay there is negativity in the world I only crochet in black now or the inspiration is gone for a while for some months uh, it has um, but something that is in you you can take out and it comes back at moments you let it uh, go out and um, the only thing I have uh, really learned is uh, putting that inspiration in even a better way out into the world to also enjoy of let people enjoy and have some positive uh, feelings out there because there is so much negativity around us it's just great to uh, put out something out there that can make you happy you like to make you are getting a good feeling of seeing a beautiful picture or that's also what I wanted to do with my books and like uh, it had to be uh, I wanted to design uh, things like which which 
put a smile on your face uh, which you wanted to see which um, with the books the same uh, if you go through a book you want to be enjoyed just seeing a book is just something you must have a feeling when seeing a book it is already enjoyable without even using it and that's the same with my crochet patterns i hope they visually already are uh, giving you a smile like okay that's nice i like to make it. it can be just your daily highlight and if i have um reach that point with some people out there I'm I'm already happy so yes it influenced me a little in my inspiration but um, in a good way like I want to make the difference between so much negativity I want to be that one colorful positive uh, post in the day so that's your first question Julie your second one is what challenges you and do you channel the challenges into your design there's a lot of challenges there um well what i can say about it is um sure there are challenges uh on personal level but also when it comes to uh putting inspiration into a design and uh, by doing that um the challenge is uh, the challenge for me is still to design something create my inspiration into something that hasn't been done uh, and is just something different already done out there like uh, making a granny square is a thing that everybody already has done sometimes so then for me it is a no-go I and if I want to make a granny square then it must be totally different than everything out there already so i always challenge myself to go that step uh, extra like it has to be a little bit different than we already have seen because that's what um, makes something uh, new again and i also want to have a backstory with everything i do i don't crochet or make something without um, a full intention there has to be a meaning behind it because if we do all kind of things without meaning it doesn't have any purpose and that delivers a big challenge um, but in the end I'll uh, all wrap it up in a design and when that uh, turns out great it even uh, gives a better feeling and I think people also see that um, so there are challenges and there are uh, that that whole challenge is also channeling in design and inspiration but in the end that's what it is and that's fine because it makes uh, the things I do these days and I feel I can I can fully support what I do and stand behind my work because it is just the thing I wanted to put out there so I'm very happy with it and um, yeah it's great um so there's your second question julie thank you for asking both questions um and so far i think this is the inspiration episode because all your questions are answered so far um once again inspiration can be a very small thing like it can be the little geometric square shape on your curtains <laughs> it can be the well what can i say the the candy paper around your uh, bubble gum it, 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 it can be really anything and uh, you don't have to be always search for the biggest things like um, a famous artist like vincent van gogh also didn't start like uh, oh starry starry night well i'm now in france and i see this whole turning sky in front of me no he, he just saw a, a sky full of stars and he thought but it, for some reason he thought why not give that uh, sky an extra dimension by lettering it like a 3d um, 
feeling on it and that's the creativity and inspiration someone has and most the inspiration can be found all around you but uh, using that inspiration and creating something is something that is in you and something you want to do and you can teach that I think but inspiration is everywhere in every second in every day in every moment and in everyone's life I think and with those really wise words I want to enclose this episode <laughs> um, thank you for watching and um, well I hope to see you in the uh, next episode and um, I hope you found this one uh, enjoyable as well bye bye <laughs>